Hi, it's Stu from Abacus Motorhomes. Thank you for choosing us for your motorhome hire. Uh, before you set off, there's a couple of operating instructions we want to run through with you, so let's get started. Thank you for hiring Abacus Motorhomes. Uh, we'd like to run through a few things with you just to make your experience a lot more enjoyable before you collect. We'll start off with explaining the use of the keys. Now, you will have two keys with this vehicle. You have your main key, which has a flip out. That is your ignition key. It's also used for removing the diesel cover for when you refill. The secondary key, that is for any additional lockers or toilet cassette holders or rear garage areas. You have a remote buttons on the fob as well. If your vehicle requires you to use these for the cab and for the habitation, please do so. Don't be tempted to use the smaller key as sometimes this can fail and break the locks. All Abacus motorhomes are diesel, so you will need to refill the tanks upon your return. Uh, some models do have the additional AdBlue tank. Um, just be aware they generally have a range of about 1200 miles. So if you are doing more than that for your trip, you may need to refill it while you're on your journey. On the driver's door console panel, you have your joystick to control your mirrors. You have two mirrors on each side and your electric windows for the cab as well. In the cab, you also have your privacy blinds. So for these doors, all you do is slide the handle back. There is a magnet on the top here. That will then fan up and attach in place. And then back down and slide the handle into place. On the windscreen, pinch these two buttons together and then slide the blind across. There's one on the other side and they will just clip together in the middle. And then when you're done, squeeze together and then clip them back into place. To operate the step, simply press the lower half of the button on the side panel. That winds the step out. Don't forget, always wind them back in before you start the engine and set off again. And that's simply pressing the top half of the button. The control panel in this model, uh, as you can see, you can check your battery and your water levels, and it will also indicate when you are successfully connected up to the master 230 volt control. Now, if I turn the decoder all the way to the left, this will show me the current level of charge within the vehicle battery. If I tip it once to the right, this will show me the current level in the leisure battery. If I switch to the right side, in here you would expect to see a full tank of water so when your tank is full obviously a hundred percent as you use it this will drop down if i tip again to the right this will show me the waste water level which will do the same thing whilst highlighted on your fresh water level press the decoder this symbol will appear this is now activated your water pump you will need this to use the taps the shower and to flush the toilet and simply press again to deactivate. With your hot water and heating control panel, you can set the hot water, the heating, and you can also select the power source with which you want these items to run from. To do so, press the decoder in the middle and these symbols will start to flash. The first one here is your heating level. So press, and then you can use the decoder to set the heating level. Once you select the temperature, press to confirm. Click to the right, this will then set the hot water. So press, you then have the choice of eco, hot or boost. We generally recommend the eco setting at around 40 degrees and press to confirm. And lastly, select your power source, press, and you have a choice of gas if you are on no electrical hookup, mix one or mix two, which will combine electricity with gas or electric one and two, which is electric on its own without the use of gas. Electric one or mix one is one kilowatt. Electric two or mix two is two kilowatts. And then press to confirm and then back to the main screen. Using the cooker, it's a very basic function, but there's a couple of safety points to be aware of. If you have a glass top, be sure to lift it before you use the hobs. Okay. When you have finished using the cooking on the hobs, let them cool off before you replace the glass as they can get very hot and you obviously don't want that to crack or break. Grill and oven positioned down below. You'll have your ignition point on here. 
and then all you've got to do is open the door switch it to the section that you want and press the button to ignite and then again just remembering to close that off when you're finished with it now the fridge units in the twin models uh, they are called a compressor unit that means that they do not run off of any gas they will only operate from the mains if you're hooked up or they will operate from the battery if you are not the vehicle comes with a tv which has a built-in dvd player if you wish to use either of these functions you can simply do this by using the remote you have the source button at the top so you can choose between tv or the dvd function if you're watching tv and you need to tune it simply go to the tv menu tab down once you get to the satellite symbol and press to confirm and then just select auto tune and that will automatically tune all the tv channels in that region so before using the toilet you will need to remember to pull the grey lever to the right. That will open up the cassette. Then you can use the toilet, the blue button to flush after you've finished. And then remember, always set the grey handle back to the left, ready for the next use. In the storage area of the vehicle, we've supplied you with a mains cable for 230 volt connection, hose for refilling your water supply, kit bags, for breakdowns, you've got high-vis jackets, warning triangles, breathalyzers, leveling blocks, dustpan and brush, broom, awning handle, and also the tablets for your toilet. Connecting to 230 volt power supply on a campsite, we have supplied you with the cable. Most important rule of thumb is make sure that the lid always goes in first. Press the rest in, make sure it's secure, and close the flap down. To remove the cable, sharp pull, and replace. To refill your water tank, you'll simply need to lift up the flap, unscrew the cover, take your hose from the back, unwind it completely, connect it up to the nearest tap on site, and then drop the nozzle in to refill it. Once the water starts coming back out of the tank, and you know it is full at that point obviously remove the nozzle replace the cap and return your hose back to the vehicle to dispose of your gray wastewater open the cassette hatch in there you will find your crank handle place that into the receptacle and twist upwards that will release the water from the gray waste tank and that will come from this gray pipe here so make sure that you are parked over the correct area on a campsite. Once it's finished, close it back off, return the handle and close the door. Right, so to empty the toilet on this model, open the door and then lift the handle to remove from there and then you should just be able to slide the box out. If you've left it open on the inside, you will not get the box out. Once you've done that, press the orange button down to release any trapped air, any gas or pressure that might have built up inside the box. At that point, then you can take the spout around, take the cover off and tip out the contents. Once you've done that, place a blue tablet back down the neck, add a couple of jugs of water, replace the cap, close it and return the box inside. So to refill the gas on this model, open the door. You've got two gas bottles that are inside of there. They're fully regulated. So to refill them, all you'll need to do is remove the cover, take the gun from the LPG pump and place it over the top of the bayonet fixing. It then has a locking mechanism which will hold the gun into place. Once it's connected safely, all you do is hold the button down on the pump. That will refill both cylinders at the same time. Once it stops, it's finished. Release the gun and replace the cap like so. To use your awning on this model, first you'll need to take your extender pole, extend it out for the full range. The T-piece will then lock into there. You can then start to unwind. And just checking that it winds out even and flush to the vehicle. Once you get it to the area that you want it, then within here you will find the leg mechanism. Come to this end here, there's a little 
fun piece. Pull back on that. That will then remove the leg. Make sure that the foot is flat. Point towards the ground and there is a small plastic flap just on the inside of the leg. If you lift that up to about a 90 degree angle, you can then extend the leg, get it to the height that you want it and then push the flap all the way to the top. Repeat the process on the other side. Okay. At that point, you can then take the pegs and the mallet from the bag, peg the feet down to secure it. There is also an additional storm strap if you should need to use it. We don't recommend using awnings within weather that is not fair or still as strong winds can take them over the top of the vehicle and we don't cover them on our insurance. I hope you've enjoyed the videos and the tutorials and found them useful in preparation for your hire. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. If you have any further questions or you need any assistance from us, please don't hesitate to contact us on the main number or head over to our website or drop us an email. Feel free to share with us all your experience with Abacus Motorhomes uh, through our social media pages on Facebook or Instagram, uh, or head over to our website to leave any further feedback. And we look forward to hearing from you.